Howdy folks, it's Kirsten here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I want to give you a short little video that is more actual like dance advice related. So I post a lot about um, just different aspects of being a dancer and things like that. Maybe more like theoretical stuff rather than just tips on how to dance your best. So today I wanted to do a video that addresses um, the subject of being your best in the studio. So I have five tips for you on how to instantly dance better. Now you can instantly implement these things. Will they instantly just be a part of every class for you? No, you have to like work to um, really make them habits. But even if you just apply one of these things, it is just a short little um, tip that you can implement that will instantly just improve the aesthetics of your dancing without having to completely retrain your body or develop more strength or musculature or flexibility or something like that. These are just quick little things and um, I hope that you enjoy it. So let's get started. Tip number one is to travel and take up as much space as you can when the combination calls for it. This is not just uh, for the obvious combinations such as waltz from the corner or um, grand allegro combinations where you're often told by a teacher to travel as much as you can, but even petit allegro, tonliers, any chasse, any tombe from um, maybe even an adagio if you have your leg up and then you tombe onto it, or even just a simple pas de bourree. If you always are practicing to stretch yourself to the length of each position and travel as much as you can and energetically take up as much space as you can. I, I'm not saying like literally just take all the space in the studio and uh, to not be cognizant of the space your peers need to dance. But if um, energetically you are expansive in your positions and trying to um, make them as big as possible, if that makes sense, like not having short wilted arms or a leg that um, is like in a tondu, just you're just sticking your leg out. There's a way to actually like feel like you're lengthening your leg out as far as it will go. And that will instantly make your dancing look better. Tip number two is to actually listen to the melody of the music that you're dancing to and try to emulate it. Um, don't just stay within the confines of counting. Of course, it's important to understand the counts that you're dancing to, especially if a teacher is very specific about on count six, we do this port de bras or um, plie on seven, stretch up on eight, you know, be strict with yourself on the counts that are, you know, prescribed to you, I suppose. But if you are actually listening to the melody of the song, you're remembering and getting in touch with the fact that dancing to music is more than just dancing to a meter, dancing to a rhythm. It is dancing to a melody that brings out emotions, feelings, um, energies. And so if you are listening to the melody and um, say if it's a, there's like an extended high note, you if you're listening to it and trying to just kind of absorb that in your body and I think bigger, better positions will come out and more artistry will come out, more intric intricate musicality. Tip number three is to play around with the focus of your eyes, not just uh, the movements of your head. The head movements will follow if you are indicating your line that you're trying to make with your eyes. Um, I know when we're young, we're taught uh, that the eyes or the head follows the hand. Like say you go, I'm not in frame, but first position to second position, you move your head. But if you actually think of initiating that with your eyes and um, seeing the room around you, looking around and changing your focus, that really changes the aesthetics of your dancing. You'll make better lines. There's something, um, about an eye line that brings energy to movement. And so if you're just making an arabesque, but okay, I'll back up, I'll back up, hold on. So say you're making an arabesque, but your eyes are kind of looking like flat or they're not looking quite over your hand. If you literally look over your hand, there's something energetically that changes and whoever's watching you dance can feel that and they can actually see that. So if, um, you practice looking kind of downwards in your preparations and then 
uh, having a more upward glance in your larger extended position, say in an adagio or something like that, it's going to actually make you look longer, taller, um, your leg even look higher sometimes. Even it, it makes you, when you're jumping, if you're looking down, it actually makes you kind of look like you're not jumping as high. It has an extraordinary visual effect on your dancing. Um, that is what your eyes are doing. So be aware of it and see how much you can change up with what your eyes are doing as long as you're actually letting the direction of your head follow the eye line. It looks really spooky when people are just like looking around with their eyes and their heads aren't moving. I've been guilty of this in the past and I probably still do it sometimes, but just push yourself, try to do that. And um, I think it'll really make you grow as a dancer. Tip number four is to use your fingers and your hands as a continuation of your line. I'm gonna be talking a lot about line in this video because obviously it has a lot to do with the aesthetics of your dancing. And um, since we are trying to make beautiful positions in ballet, not just movements or just positions, but you know, we're, we're making pictures, lines, you know? Um, so the more you work on that, um, and it's actually not that hard to do, that's why it's part of this like quick fix video, uh, the better you're gonna look so and it doesn't have to do with like trying to get more turned out or getting a higher leg um, but anyway so I was gonna talk about hands and um, like finger positioning uh, so I I see a lot of people with really strange habits like with their hand position either the worst energetically is when people have kind of like collapsed hands or when their palms are like kind of closed off and their fingers are kind of bunched together i call this the mitten hand because like all four fingers are together and then there's a thumb or when people just have the pointer finger or when their pinkies all bunched up weird stuff okay so actually Think of your wrist being elongated as a part of your forearm and your fingers actually continuing that line. So like in an, in an arabesque, I'll demonstrate again, not just this or this or something like that, but you're actually extending there or like in an allonge or something, something like that. I don't know. I'm doing weird things with my fingers now, <laughs> but, um, or like in a fifth position, if you're like this, it just really doesn't look very good. Think of um, lengthening your fingers and having them be defined. You know, they are each in their own separate position. They're not spread apart. They're not too close together. They're just each kind of in their own lane, but uh, delicately placed. So the sooner you really examine, like just even take a couple minutes to just really examine the best um, finger and hand position for you and your dancing and try to just really drill it into yourself as a habit. Um, yeah, I think that really changes how people dance. I even know a lot of professional dancers who are absolutely beautiful, but they have like kind of weird habits of like their, their lines don't look as long or as polished if, um, they have like no energy in their hands. So just be aware of that. My last tip, tip number five, is to relax down in each plie. And yes, I said relax, don't force it down. And it will actually make each position you make after each plie or between each plie much better. Especially any position like a releve, something that has an upwards energy, having a good downwards, um, like relaxation to go back up will create so much dynamic uh, in your dancing. It will make you uh, have more level changes. It'll make you look more relaxed, more in your own element. It'll help you have more rhythm. If your plies are relaxing down as far as they'll go, I mean within reason, within the proper time frame, um, you can actually use your plie to emulate the rhythm in the music. Now, I don't have a lot of time to really go into that, but um, the more you relax down, say in your jumps, uh, we all hear in science, every action needs an equal and opposite reaction. So, um, or it creates an equal and opposite reaction. Goodness gracious. <laughs> is it clear I'm not in school anymore? <laughs> but what I'm saying is that if you create enough spring downwards in your plie, it'll be like um, a slingshot, you know, pulling that lever backwards to make the ball or whatever is in your slingshot launch further out. 
Same with jumps. The further down you go, the further up you could go. Within reason, you do have to have a buoyancy. You can't just force yourself down. Um, but that's why I said relax. So really just focus on using each plie to go downwards so that you could spring up again and it will just make your dancing look so much more um, rhythmical, relaxed, um, just beautiful and dynamic. So um, yeah, that's it. I do have one bonus tip and it is to actually film yourself kind of before and after you implement implement each one of these tips. Uh, and you could even just do it one out of one at a time. It could be kind of tedious, but I think if you film yourself and um, if you're able to visually see the difference that each one of these tips makes on your dancing, it'll help you implement it that much sooner and to keep it around as a habit. So I do hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you will give it a thumbs up and share it. If you so please, if you wish, if you don't mind. <laughs> and do check out my Patreon account. Um, by the way, I do have more perks going up on Patreon for the people who are so kind to financially support this channel. I'm including things like polls for upcoming content. You can actually vote um, on the subject matter that I will address next on my channel and uh, things like opinions on current events in the ballet world or you know even videos and pictures when I get back into dancing a little bit more um, after I make a full re injury recovery you know so anyway I do hope that you will check out my patreon account and um, I will see you soon or talk to you soon you'll see me but I'll talk to you okay <laughs> bye guys